Hi everyone, welcome back and in this video we are going to fix the login UI problem that we had in the last video. So right now if you run the application and you try to type something in the text field, you see nothing. And we will fix this thing in this video. So let's do it. The first thing that we will do is we will create a sealed class to get all the login UI events. And this is the structure we will follow throughout our application. So for every screen, we will create an event class and with the help of that event class, we will take the event triggers. So inside the login package, let's create a new Kotlin class file and create a sealed class and name it login UI event. Now, what are the events in our login UI? So the first event is when we enter something on the email field. So we can name it email changed and we will get the email and it is login UI event. Then we have another event. I will close this thing to make the code area bigger. So after email changed, we have password changed and here we will get the password. So we have email changed and password changed. Now after entering email and password, we will click on this button that is the login button. So we will create data object login. That means it is a click event. That's why we don't have any data. And the same way we have one more event that is forget password. And we also have one more event when the user don't have an account, user can sign up. So we have data object sign up. So we have a sealed class to track all the events in our screen. Now we also need to create one more class to render the state or the current state of the login UI. And for this, I will create a new data class and I will name it login UI state. Now for the state, we have two values for now. One is email and the other one is password. So we have email of type string and the initial value is an empty string. And then we have password of type string and the initial value is an empty string. So we have our login UI state. Now what we will do is we will create the state object inside view model. So we will create a new Kotlin class file and this is login view model. Now this is our view model. So we have to inherit view model and inside the view model, we will create our UI state. So we have private val UI state and it is mutable state flow, not state, but mutable state flow. And the initial state is login UI state. So initially we have empty email and empty password. Now to observe the state outside this view model, I will create a val UI state and it is immutable. So we have state flow of type login UI state and we will assign UI state to this. Now we will create a function that is on event and we have UI event and here we will check when UI event and we will add all the branches. So we have a bunch of events. So instead of to do, we will update the state. So we have UI state equals to dot value equals to UI state dot value dot copy. And we will put email here. So we have UI event dot email. And we have to specify the parameter name also because we are just updating the email and not the password. And the same thing we will do for password, uh, not forget password, but password changed. We have password this time. So we will update the password. And for now, we will ignore these events. So I will just remove these events from here and I will add an else block. And inside else block, I am doing nothing. So we have our view model ready. Now let's go back to our login composable and here we will pass the view model. So we have view model of type login view model. Now to this function that is our login function, we will not pass view model. 
because if we pass view model here and later when we use health health will not be able to inject view model for preview functions and that's why i am using this strategy i will create a login screen and then a login and this login we will preview and here we will use all the complex objects for example view model so what we can do now we can pass a parameter to this login function that is on event and it will return login ui event from the parameter the return type is unit now here whenever the value is changed on the email text field what i can do is i can call on event and i can pass login ui event so we have login ui event dot email changed and here we will pass the new email so it is it the same way we will update the password i will copy the same thing and here for password i will pass password changed now how to put the values here we cannot pass hard coded strings here so what i will do is i will take one more parameter that is the ui state and here instead of hard coding the strings we will pass ui state dot email and ui state dot password now i think it will work we just need to pass the parameters first we have to get the state and we will get the state from view model so here we will write ui state equals to view model dot ui state dot collect as state so we will collect the state here and instead of using this function we can write collect as state with life cycle so that when the composable is not in the active life cycle it will not collect the ui state so here we will pass ui state equals to ui state dot value and for on event we will pass a lambda now here what we will do is we will call the on event function in view model so here we will write view model this view model dot on event and we will pass the event that we have here in the it parameter and that's it this time it should work the only thing needed is we need to provide view model while calling this login screen composable so here we can use view model function to provide the view model so let's run the application and make sure it is working absolutely fine now and we have an error this is because while previewing the login we have to pass the parameters so we will pass ui state as login ui state and on event an empty lambda and that's it run the application again so we have the login screen and this time if we enter the value it is reflecting here you can see i can enter the email i can enter the password and the problem is password is showing so what i have to do is i have to make the password field as is password field to true so here i will write is password field and then true now run it again so email is working and password is hidden now so it is working absolutely fine so i think that's all for this video and from the next video we will start setting up the login api so i hope you are very excited for the next one in case you have any problem or confusion so far please feel free to ask in the comment section below and if you like the course then don't forget to share it with your friends and you can subscribe to simplified coding and like this video thanks for watching everyone this is bilal khan now signing off